The final stage of yoga is enlightenment, or in Sanskrit, samadhi, rarely talked about in yoga studios outside of India. That is what I want to talk about today. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jimmy Bark, and I've been practicing hot yoga since 1980, teaching since 1981. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, smash the like button if you're enjoying this video. If you're not new to the channel, you might have noticed we changed and painted the accent wall. Actually, my wife painted it because she loves to shift things around in the house. So I hope you enjoy our new color. And most people don't talk about Samadhi because they've never been there before. They don't know what it's like. They've never experienced that higher state of enlightenment. So you may ask, why am I talking about it? Have I reached Samadhi? Is that your question? Have I reached Samadhi? I will answer that question, but you have to wait to the end of the video. So let's talk about what samadhi even means. It means absorption. It means enlightenment. What am I saying by absorption? The concept of yoga is that the souls are scattered into the universe and every soul's inevitable destiny is to return to the Brahman. That's what they call in Sanskrit Brahmachara, chara to return to the Brahman, the universe. The reason why yoga was created in the first place was to give techniques and tools for individuals to realize their true self and that's the connection with in the immersion with the universe so when the yogi reaches the final stage the full immersion takes place and that's what the absorption is they're absorbing in themselves into the universe they call in quantum physics the quantum soup they've realized their true purpose which is to return home and what made yoga popular in the west especially in europe in the united states and australia is the physical aspect or the asana which is practiced in Hatha yoga. So samadhi is really not at all talked about. It's not the intention going into a yoga class in the West because we're trying to get flexible. We're trying to get stronger. We're quieting the mind and that helps to nourish the soul. In my teacher training programs, and by the way, if you're interested in doing a teacher training program with me, we have live trainings and online courses. Look at the description below. I'll leave links to my teacher training programs. I always say think of yoga as a sphere. So we are connecting the mind, body, and the soul. That's the bottom part of the sphere in our yoga class by strengthening the body, getting it flexible, quieting the mind that nourishes the soul. But that still is the separation. That's still the bottom part of the sphere. What's happening is we're trying to make create a union between the mind, body, and the soul to connect to the universe. So the reason why the yogis chose the word yoga in the first place, so we can yoke with the universe or yoke with gods think of yoga as connection but it's not the connection of your mind your body and your soul we prepare that for the true higher connection of the higher self in yoga they call it the atman the realized master with the brahman the universe and those two coming together i always talk about my favorite metaphor is the sistine chapel adam and god just about touching fingers so now let's talk about Pantanjali, one of the most famous yoga saints of modern day times around the year 100 CE. And yoga they describe the time periods as common era, CE, or before the common era. So 100 AD or CE was when Pantanjali came along and he wrote the Yoga Sutras. And in the Yoga Sutras, he compiles the eight limb path. And the final limb, the final stage of yoga, according to Pantanjali, is enlightenment, samadhi. Now in Hatha Yoga, which is a different path than Pantanjali, definitely a video I want to do in the future. I keep promising to do that. In the Hatha Yoga, they have a different prescription. They call it the Saptasadhana, or the seventh path. But their seventh path, um, they don't call it limb, they call it path. Their seventh path is also samadhi. So it's the same intention, the same end, but a different means to find it. So once again, like I said before, you go to a yoga class outside of India, they're not even talking about samadhi. They're focusing mostly on asana and pranayama and taking care of the individual. But in the bigger scheme of things, the higher stage of yoga, what the true intention was by the yogis, ancient times, even to this day, the main focus is that union or connection with God, and that's the samadhi, that's the absorption, that's the enlightenment. Pintanju in his eight limbs, and Matsyendra and Goraksha, who created the Hatha Yoga seventh path, same end, but a different means to get there. 
So how does Pantanjali prescribe to find Samadhi? By quieting the mind. I did a recent video on yoga for the mind in his most famous sutra. There was 195 sayings or aphorisms, was yoga's chitta vritti naroda. Yoga is the cessation of the worlds of consciousness, or yoga quiets the mind. And he's saying that, when he's saying yoga quiets the mind, he's not saying just quiet your mind. He's saying quiet the mind to find the immersion with God, to find the immersion with the universe. The Hatha yogis have a different prescription. They say use the body, or more specifically the spine and the brain, to find that connection, to find as a conductor, to tap into a frequency. So it's a different consciousness, different means to the same end. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button that you get notified when I post a new video. One of the foremost authorities on yoga is actually a man from Germany. His name is George Fuhrenstein, or in German it's pronounced Georg Fuhrenstein. He wrote a book called Yoga Tradition, one of the most comprehensive books on yoga that I ever that I ever read. He also wrote the book, The Encyclopedia of Yoga and Tantra. Those are the two required books for the Barkin Method teacher training programs. And in the yoga tradition, he talks about so many different types of samadhi, but there are three main ones. So let's talk about it. The first one is called Salbikalpa Samadhi. Now, according to Yogananda, who's one of the big gurus in our lineage and my guru, Bikalpa, the word Bikalpa means difference. And the word Sa, is with difference. The next stage, which is a higher stage, is nirbikalpa. Once again, bikalpa difference, N-R-I, nir, is without difference. And the third is maha samadhi. Maha meaning the great samadhi. So let's talk about salbikalpa first. When the yogi goes into salbikalpa samadhi, now sometimes the guru can do what's called a shakti pot, a transference of the shakti energy. In the book, Autobiography of Yogi, Yogananda talks about his shakti pot. When he came downstairs, his guru tapped him in the chest and he went into this ecstatic state of salbikalpa samadhi. But a much higher state is when the yogi can induce that state himself. So what happens in salbikalpa samadhi, according to the yogis, is that his breath leaves his body that the soul is actually trapped in the body, especially into the spine. And in Salpikalpa, the soul is now freed from the body. So have you ever heard of out-of-body experiences or near-death experience where people can look down and see themselves on the operating table? Well, the yogi can do this and induce this on his own. So his, he can actually leave his body, he can look down and see, he can have Local and non-local consciousness happening simultaneously. He knows what's going on in the room, but he also knows what's going on around the block and down the street. So he has this ecstatic state. Yogananda said it was 10,000 million times better than any sensation or desire he had ever experienced in his life. But it's a temporary state, and at one point, the breath comes back into the body, and the yogi wakes up. And when he's out of it, he's out of it. When he's up, he's up. But while he's in it, he still feels a difference. Even though he's in this amazing ecstatic state of enlightenment, he still feels a difference. Remember, Salbikalpa with difference between him and God. Now let's talk about Nirbikalpa in comparison, without difference. Now the yogi is a much higher state. He's reached a permanent state of enlightenment. He's not breathless. The soul doesn't leave his body. He's in the body and he's in a waking, walking state. There's a wonderful book that was written years and years ago called Chop Wood, Carry Water. If you're around my age, you probably have heard of it before. The, the whole concept of the premise of it is before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Meaning you're still gonna go about your daily chores, but now as you go about your daily chores, you have a different perspective. So there's no more breathlessness. He's in a constant permanent state of enlightenment. And according to the yogis, nur means without, without difference. He feels no difference between him and God. Now the traditionalist, especially back in the, in the Vedic times, they didn't believe in Nirvikalpa Samadhi because it would be blasphemous to say there's no difference between you and God. It's almost saying you are God. So 
to reach Nirvikalpa Samadhi was definitely a controversial state of consciousness. Not all yogis believed in it. Pantanjali didn't believe in it because he was a dualist. But that's a whole other video. I'm not going to get into it now. And the final stage is Maha Samadhi or the Great Samadhi where the yogi chooses to leave his body forever. So he's been, now the yogi's been practicing Salpakalpa Samadhi. He can be in a breathless state, in that temporary state, but he always comes back. Now, believe it or not, because this gets a little bit out there, it may conflict with your spiritual religious beliefs, but according to the yogis, when the yogi decides to reach Mahasamadhi, his time on this earth is over and he chooses to leave. So he's been practicing in Salpikalpa all this time, but now he chooses not to come back into the body and leaves forever. So we talked about Yogananda before, who is my guru. He wrote the book, Autobiography of a Yogi, that's what inspired the Beatles to get into yoga. It was the only book that Steve Jobs had on his iPhone when he died. Autobiography of a Yogi, classic spiritual book. Read that book and you're into this subject, you wanna read that book right, like right now. So in this book, he talks about it and is verified by the LA Times, so believe it or not. So here's what happens, he goes into Maha Samadhi. And Yogananda, and as most yogis are very humble and they're not they don't show off their yogic powers they don't show off their yogic cities so, and he was very shy about that and didn't want to it wasn't why he was doing yoga in the first place i talked about it in this video where george lucas was inspired by yoga saying that if you use the yogic powers for your own personal gain you go to the dark side it's the same concept in yoga as you get more powerful you don't show off your powers but the last thing he did his last act on the earth after he went into Maha Samadhi, it was March 7th, 1952, his organization, Self-Realization Fellowship, had asked the mortician to come back to examine the body 20 days later. And it's in the LA Times, it's, it's recorded. There was no sign of rigor mortis or decay of any kind. It was in the exact same state the moment that he had passed, the moment he had gone to Maha Samadhi. It's in the LA Times, look it up. So in summary, the true intention of yoga is not just that we get flexible and strong and that we quiet our mind and relieve stress. That's the bottom part of the sphere. The true intention, the bigger picture in yoga is that we find the immersion, that we find the yoke or the union between man and God or man and the universe, the Atman and the Brahman. That's the true intention of the spiritual science. Salbi Kapa with difference, Nirbi Kapa without difference, Maha Samadhi, the great Samadhi. So I promised you I would tell you if I had reached Samadhi at the end of this video. So when the student asked the teacher, have you reached Samadhi? The answer is, those that know, tell not. Those that tell, know not. Isn't that wonderful? There's a quote from Yogi Raj. You can check out his videos another time. So I'm not telling you nothing. So that's our episode for today. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I get to all the comments. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you haven't hit the like button, hit it right now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.